The morning that I collected, mm. it's honorable that brought me to Nigeria. Me, yeah. the yeah. you know yeah. I want names all of now. Look at the country in Nigeria. When you want to take the steps every day, there's no country a better place. And new Nigeria is out there. Education is telling them it's time to change. All colors, shades, angles, and perspectives can be overwhelming in our present world of information overload. This is introducing the ground. Ground Zero is a current affairs discussion phone-in program covering topical issues in the polity. The program is a platform for an in-depth analysis of trending issues by professionals, authorities in various fields, analysts, and key actors in the polity. Ground Zero gives the listener an opportunity to contribute to the discussion via phone call, SMS, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. From the conservatively serious to the ridiculously funny, Ground Zero accommodates them all. Professionals, urban contemporary businessmen and women, policy makers, public service workers, students, artisans, traders and the in-between. Ground Zero comes up on Tuesdays from 5 to 6 p.m. and Saturdays 4 to 5 p.m. Ground Zero. This program is exclusive to Invicta 98.9 FM. Tune in. It's a lovely Tuesday evening, and this is Invicta 98.9 FM. It's time for the Never Dull Moment program on radio, Ground Zero. Ground Zero is a program that is designed to bring topical issues in the polity, and with analysts in the studio and guests, we try our best to do justice to all of this topic. And today on the program Ground Zero, it's not going to be different, as we have something that's very important, something that's going to engage you, the listener, and uh, for you that is living in Kaduna, there's something for you to also react to and get to know. So, without uh, taking much of your time, I'll give you the snippets of what we'll be looking at today on the program. Then we'll come to introduce our guest and let you know all of the platforms where you can make a contribution to the program. Okay. We we'll start from the first, the Kaduna State Local Government Reforms and Opportunities for Community Engagement. That's the first issue we'll be looking at. And the second one is the appointment of Abdul Rashid Bawa as EFCC's boss. Yes, his name has been submitted. We'll get to find out details about all of this in the course of today's program. And of course, Twitterland... Facebook land online is already catching fire as a result of the appointment. What is causing all of this? We would also know in the course of this, uh, in the course of the program. My guest on the program today, I have three of them, two from the Coalition of Associations for Leadership, Peace, Empowerment, and Development Carpet. That's I have Yusuf Goje. And Martins Abbas, this is good evening. You are welcome to Ground Zero. Good evening, Mr. Hayes. Uh, good evening, listeners. I also have Martins Abbas Danjuma with me in the studio. Danjuma? Thank you very much, Hayes, for having me and uh, my greetings to the listening public out there. All right. And uh, we also have someone coming from the Kabna State Ministry of Local Government Affairs. 
He is a planning officer. He is Mohammed Adam. Mohammed Adam, welcome to Ground Zero. Good evening, listeners, and I'm delighted to be on board. All right. So you've had my guests, and uh, together we'll be looking at these issues. Meanwhile, you can contribute to the program uh, via our various social media platforms, starting from Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Twitter and Instagram handles are at Invicta FM 989 at Invicta FM 989. And of course, you can watch us live on Facebook at Invicta FM Kaduna. If you go to Facebook now, you can watch us at Invicta FM Kaduna. And of course, for those that want to listen to us, you can listen to us from anywhere in the world. That's talking about going to our website, which is at uh, InvictaFMNG.com. InvictaFMNG.com. Or you can download the Invicta FM app from our website and other um, online marketplaces. Okay. My name is Ahis Adon, and you can call me the one with a passion for crowd satisfaction. So let's go straight to looking at a little background on what we'll be discussing on the program today uh, so that you can we can be on the same page. All right. Recently, the first and second phase of the inauguration of the Community Engagement Framework and Accountability Mechanism in 10 local government areas of Kaduna State took place. The process was initiated by the Ministry of Local Government Affairs with support of PEL and civil society partners established the mechanism in Kajuru, Jema, Zaria, Lere, Chikung, Sanga, Zango Katav, Kaduna South, Ikara, Sabongeri local government and Sabongeri local government areas. In each of these local government areas, a technical working group was inaugurated after they underwent the two-day training and developed an action plan to be implemented over a two-year period. The main objective of the mechanism is to strengthen community engagement and institutionalize ongoing local government reforms in Kaduna State. In view of the successes recorded, a public presentation of the report is deemed necessary to allow stakeholders to provide feedback, the technical group, working group to validate output and get collective strategies to scale up to the remaining 13 local government areas. Equally important are approaches to adopt in sustaining the accountability mechanism towards strengthening the reforms and improving service delivery at the local government area. So I'm sure you understand why I, I said earlier that there's something that everybody needs to be involved in to get the very best out of governance. All right, the second item that we would also look at on the program today is the appointment, uh, um, the, uh, is the appointment of, or do I say nomination? No, it's an appointment, though. It's just for the Senate to endorse. President Mohammed Buhari has nominated Abdul Rashid Bawa as a substantive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The president's nomination was contained in a letter to the president of the Senate, Dr. Ahmed Lawan, requesting the upper chambers of the National Assembly to screen and confirm Bawa for the position. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshino, said President Buhari was acting in accordance with Paragraph 2, Subsection 3 of Part 1, Cap E1 of ESCC Act 2004. President Muhammad Buhari has asked the Senate to confirm Abdul Rashid Bawa as substantive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. In a letter to the President, the Senate, uh, as pre President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawa, the President said he was acting in accordance with Paragraph 2, Subsection 3 of Part 1 of uh, Cap E of EFCC Act 2014. Yeah. Okay, Bawa is 40 years old. He is a trained EFCC investigator with vast experience in investigation, prosecution of advance fee fraud cases, official corruption, bank fraud, money laundry, and other economic crimes. He has undergone several specialized training in different parts of the world and was one of the pioneer EFCC cadet officers in 2005. Bauer holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in economics and a Master's 
in international affairs and diplomacy, the statement signed by Femi Additional states. Well, you've had all of that. That is the presentation of the president. And of course, like I said, every other place is on fire as there are various allegations and various conspiracy theories which many Nigerians are reacting to. Like I said, allegations, which includes the fact that he is a cousin of the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, which includes the fact that he was once um, arrested by the immediate past acting chairman of the of the EFCC, Mago, and all of that. These are insinuations and allegations flying all around. What would be our take on all of that would be part of the content of today's program. But first, let us come home and talk about the local and talk about our first item on the program today which is the Cardinal State Local Government Reforms and uh, Opportunities for Community Engagement. I start first by coming to Yusuf Goje and I want him to set the tone for our discussion this uh, this evening. Yusuf Goje, yeah. let's talk about this Cardinal State Local Government Reforms and opportunities for development broadly. What are the reforms and what are some of the opportunities in brief before we come to talk about details about the report and the activity that will be taking place in the couple of... Tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. So let's go. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, as you are aware, the local government uh, tier of gov uh, the local government uh, is the closest tier of government to the people, yeah. and we always say that uh, you can always walk into any local government secretariat, and nobody will ask you where you are going to. Probably till you get to the office of the chairman, they will ask you who are you looking for. But you see, you cannot do the same when you go to the government house. Uh, once they even see you loitering around the street in front of the government house, already the security will either pick you up or send you away. So this is just to illustrate to you how uh, impactful the local government system can be in directly uh, engaging people at the grassroots and meeting uh, their needs. So having said that, uh, over the past uh, five years, yeah. a number of uh, legal frameworks have been provided, a number of reforms have been initiated in Kaduna State by the government, and uh, the legal framework, uh, we saw the uh, amendments of the local government reform law uh, and other laws uh, that led to the local government uh, law 2018. And if you look at that local government law uh, in section 56 of that law, it mandates the local government to run a culture of participatory governance. And it provides that uh, city, they must ensure that citizens participate at the level of developing the local government development plan, okay. at the level of doing their budget, and at the level of evaluating and tracking budget implementation uh, performance. Then secondly, if you go to uh, section 72 of that same law, you see that it also provides very strong backing for citizens' engagement uh, at the local government level. And uh, part of it says that any budget at the local government that is not subjected to, a, to public consultation and there is no citizen's input through a town hall meeting, that budget is null and void. Wow. So it also goes further to say that that budget estimates should not be taken to the assembly as long as it doesn't pass through those uh, two processes. One, citizens' consultation. Two, there must be evidence that there is citizens' input in that particular uh, law, uh, in that particular budget. So you see, already we have a legal framework that ensures that whatever is happening at the local government level, at the level of development plan, budget uh, formulation, and budget implementation, citizens must participate. Then uh, to follow up on that, we have also seen that uh, the local government development plan uh, was uh, developed 
across the 23 local governments of Kaduna State, fully supported by the Ministry for Local Government and Planning and Budget uh, Commission, where uh, it provides what the local governments aim to achieve within the period of 2017 to 2019. And that is very important because uh, usually you find out that local government administrations had no plans. They were just spending monies without any uh, focus on where, uh, the, what is the output or outcome that they would achieve in terms of development and improving the livelihoods of people. Yeah. So if you go into the local government development plan, there is a section on implementation strategy, which provides a framework where citizens can participate in tracking all local government projects at their community level. Okay. Uh, that is very critical. Then another third reform that also keys into the legal framework is the Community Development Charter, which was even initiated by civil society. Civil society started it in Kaduna State, and the government keyed into it and adopted it as the channel through which citizens' needs would be informing the local government uh, budget. And for the past three years, it has been informing the local government budget where uh, annually, before the uh, incoming year's budget, citizens in their various communities gather and, uh, and prioritize their needs that they want to be reflected in their local government budgets. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing that has happened. And as civil society, we have partnered with the Ministry of Local Government in during their budget reviews, uh, performance reviews and budget formulation to assess what is the performance in terms of input of the CDC that informs the local government budget and what is the performance in terms of implementation. So lastly, there's the local government fiscal transparency, accountability and sustainability program, yeah. uh, which recently you heard that uh, monies were released to the 23 local governments based on their performance. Uh, there are disbursement linked indicators that is used to measure the performance of this local government. And basically what that seeks to achieve is to ensure more transparency, accountability, citizens' engagement, and what is called physical sustainability. Physical sustainability means how government is getting money and how government is managing these monies and utilizing this money. So with all these reforms, one gap has existed. And that gap is no level of citizens' awareness on all these things I have talked about. Right. These things have been in existence, yeah. but very few people know about, about it. That. When you go to community levels, very few among the community people are participating in these processes. So it is one of the reasons that the Ministry for Local Government met a development partner who also uh, that spelled to also also we civil societies work together with, and that's how we civil society came into this intervention to ensure that in line with the open government partnership that has a co-creation platform yeah. that provides for equal number of government, equal number of citizens groups, a representative in a technical working group. So in the first phase, we were able to set up. 10 from government, 10 from civil society, in 10 local governments. The local government chairman inaugurated these technical working groups. They were trained for two days, and they came up with an action plan of how they will ensure two critical things. One, how do they improve citizens' participation? And that's why we, uh, the citizens' representatives were brought on this technical working group. Then how, from the government side, can we ensure that these reforms that we are talking about is institutionalized? Because the reality is this, this government will one day finish its tenure and leave. And we don't want an issue where uh, reforms that are also very critical to ensuring inclusive development are thrown away. Because we have a culture of policy somersaults in this country where each government comes, instead of looking at the good part of what the other government has done and improving on it, 
they tend to throw away the baby with the bath water. Mm. So how can uh, we use this platform to institutionalize these reforms that we feel that it's not about party politics? Uh, the politicians can do their party, but for all citizens, these are reforms that can deliver inclusive development for us that will ensure that uh, people at the grassroots get the quality of services that is happening. So that's why this uh, uh, program was initiated, pilot in 10 local governments so far, which you have listed in yeah, your yeah. intro. Then uh, we are hoping that the 13 other remaining local governments will be covered. All right, uh, 10 local government already covered, 13 other local government looking at the possibility of covering them soon. I'll come to um, the government official that we have here, or do I say the civil servant that's with us here, <laughs> the planning officer of Kaduna State Ministry of Local Government Affairs, Mohamed Adamu. Now, since uh, the inception of all of this, how would you say it has, it has brought governance close to the people? Well, uh, once again, good evening, listeners, and uh, I'm very much uh, grateful for being invited to partake in this uh, laudable uh, program. I will say, since the inception of this reform uh, in the local government system, we have seen uh, remarkable achievements, uh, both uh, from the staff of the local government and from uh, participation of the citizens in the affairs of the local government councils. Okay. Uh, on the part of the civil, civil servants, uh, there is an increased, uh, in fact, their capacity is being improved. There's, there is training and retraining on how to go about uh, governance, uh, adherence to, rule, uh, to policies, and so on and so forth. And that really changed the narratives, the way civil servants think, the way they go about doing their businesses, and uh, on how to improve our quality of service and uh, living standard of the people at the grassroots. And from the uh, communities or the citizens, we have seen for the first time uh, citizens owning up to uh, projects and programs being implemented in their communities, uh, asking questions, coming to the local government, seeking for information on how things have been done. And as uh, Goje rightly said, uh, the introduction of the Community Development Charter has uh, really helped in the bringing the citizens closer to the government because uh, unlike before, when uh, budget estimates were being done using the incremental uh, budgeting system and then the officers in the local government thinking of what the communities need, not what the community really needs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, once you do that, you might think that... Uh, in a particular community, a borehole is needed while their problem might not be a borehole. Yeah. Maybe a very simple problem that is not even as huge as a borehole. So with the introduction of the uh, community development charter, that really helped because uh, in all their community felt need, they have to prioritize which one is the most important and uh, doing that in a term presents them to the uh, local government council. And based on the ceilings and the envelopes, of the local government, they will be able to capture some. And uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Yusuf said, uh, these things attract yeah. at uh, per intervals, at uh, inter regular intervals, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. during the budget performance striking. How many of the community felt needs made it to the budget and how many of these uh, city, CDC projects are implemented and uh, the cost the uh, percentage and so on and so forth. So this has really helped in the uh, changing the way things are done at the grassroots, and we are uh, we are continually see, continually seeing uh, this uh, uh, change of attitude uh, in both the civil servants and the uh, citizens. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mohammed Adamo for. This um, expose, I would say, and uh, you're listening to Ground Zero on Invicta 98.9 FM. Soon we'll be bringing on Danjuma Abbas to give us the citizens' angle to it because I know that many of these activities were things that he was one of the foot on the ground there. So we'll talk about that. But first, let's quickly take these commercial messages, and right after that, we'll come back to the program and continue with our 
discussion. It's in Victor 98.9 FM and the program is Ground Zero. Hi, have you heard of COVID-19? Do you think it is real? Or maybe you think it's a myth? Well, COVID-19 is very real and has killed thousands of people around the world. In most cases, COVID-19 causes mild symptoms, including dry cough, tiredness, and fever. Though, fever may not be a symptom for some older people. COVID-19 can be easily transmitted from one person to another. So as a preventive measure, frequently wash your hands with soap and running water before and after any physical contact or sanitize with an alcohol-based sanitizer. Make sure you always put on your face masks at any social gathering be it in the market school place of worship or at work endeavor to maintain adequate social distancing of at least two meters away from the next person and avoid physical contact as much as possible if at any time you notice any of the symptoms that have been mentioned please do not panic kindly call the ncdc toll line on 080-09-700-10 this message is probably brought to you by the Cooker center for faith research in public policy Policy. My control people, on the service, Nigerian Communication Commission, NCC, don't make them compulsory. We will link every phone number to the national identification number, NIN. That's why your better network, 9Mobile, don't make the exercise easy, easy for you. Dial star 996 hash to check and link your NIN. You fit go www.9mobile.com.ng forward slash NIN to do them. All the 9Mobile benefits there. Wait, don't the enjoy still can that for you. Nine mobile. Sunlight we can want. Metural wood. Sabay shigani daga ira ira ngaran sabule the sunlight ke kisar wa. Yena zuwa apay kisi ni kwensha awa. Kumay na chatara da inga sa chantara no wood na asali. Nikitang ha ora me kuma kavitis. Kuma te aya mongo ya baikyan kwa ge chan yeke kawe ha kwewe na daga kavitis. Shingye na kawab da shine. Aha. Yawan chusu na diyar tiwang ha ora. Daga ramen da ha ori yeke yine da aki kira kavitis. Idan kana ha kwewe baikyan kwa lam tara da kolget maximum kaviti protection. Saarun aikin sane e nisar da sa nagarun kalsiyam kan tiking ha ora. Ya kane sida gaya rami. Luka chene na inkan tara yuwa mu zwa ga ampani da kolget mongo ge baiki. Da kuma dunia su kazaba. Because kolget logs kaksiyom in. Nisar da sa nagarun kalsiyam kan tiking ha ora. Colligate, ya sa ma amin te waro unge le kito ching ha ora te Nigeria. Say because the government don't allow us to begin to the waka and to the do things, you know means say coronavirus don't clear. And because you fit to go anywhere you want to go, you know means say you no go careful again. The way coronavirus, they take a cut people never reduce. Coronavirus no send your age, your religion. It no send whether you be big man or poor man. The disease fit catch anybody. That's now why we all supposed to try to protect ourselves with our family. Make we obey everything where authority tell us to do. Like to the wear face mask when we come out for house. To they give people gap where reach six feet. And to the cough or sneeze inside tissue paper or inner elbow. Always they wash your hand with soap under flowing water. Or make you use a hand sanitizer. Not they shook yourself for where many people gather. And try to they chop good food to put for your body. Make you for study chim chim chim. If you they feel one kind for your body, like a fever, cough, sneezing, and if you know the breathe well, call Kaduna Center number on top of 0901-099-9923 or 0901-099-9924. Nobody they safe until all of us they safe. Join Kaduna State Government to move forward on top of the fight against COVID-19. This message is brought to you by Aid Foundation, Kaduna State Ruwasa, with the support from Water Aid Nigeria. ハケンでけんでみあびちゅ。ワンナンコアエルウォルトコメデクレタバ。あ、なんごてて立てんでちきなば。シコカウ。あ、いいまさらにやさ。たび。がこまにになるけしんにこかこな。あったりし。ば、
we uh, we we are talking about the local government reforms and what it holds for Kaduna State and uh, the benefits. And we've had from uh, Yusuf Goje and uh, Mohamed Adamo. Let's now come to Danjuma Abbas Dangwa for him to give us his own angle too, because I know he well. I've been part of some of the CDCs, so I know that he's been on the streets, foot on the ground. Tell us what experience, how the experience has been like and the kind of feedbacks that you're getting from the citizens. We have we have been able to source uh, some of these uh, examples, evidences, even during the establishment of the local government accountability mechanisms in some of these uh, local governments. Like uh, Yusuf Goji had uh, enumerated earlier, the local government fiscal transparency, accountability and sustainability uh, program or tool was deployed uh, earlier before we, 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 we before even considering the accountability mechanism uh, to be in place and uh, what we what we have as results from that is that citizenry at the grassroots level uh, for most of the local governments in Kaduna not all most uh, however are getting information about how much is coming into the local government at the end of a month uh, what are the key priority areas that the local government is voting uh, these resources? And um, what stands as the balance after all is done? Um, this information has been uh, willingly and proactively disclosed by the uh, local government councils themselves. And what it helps citizens uh, here is that citizens are now having a firmer understanding of the challenges that their local government councils are faced with, and they are also uh, standing up to the uh, to the task and responsibilities when required to support the local government accordingly. You will re- you will uh, remember some time back during the the COVID at the onset at the onset of the COVID-19 um, lockdown. Local government councils like Jama'a were able to secure from citizens, uh, faith-based organizations, individuals uh, who came forward and provided uh, food, food items and materials to the local government council to distribute to vulnerable groups in the society. Now, he thought, right before now, it's unheard of for anybody to gather such items to go and give to government and say, we are sure that uh, you can do this as well as we can, or you can even do this even better. And that is the kind of confidence we have seen, the transparency and accountability uh, process that some of these local governments have embraced, you know, come to impact. There, we were in Sabangari where someone told us how the local government council chairman, after they had written uh, requests about uh, some particular projects within their community, you know, the, the local government council chairman invited them, he told them, this is where we are concerning this project. In fact, these are the options that we are faced with. We are actually faced with doing you A or B, and the community said, no, this is actually B, is actually our priority. Do it first, we can come back to A later. And they were the ones who were now telling us what the staggered plan for financing even reflects. And so this level of uh, inclusiveness, you know, the citizens who uh, uh, I've been sure they will have to rely on uh, uh, councillors and other politicians from the chairman's party or the big wigs in the society within the party to come over and tell them these things. But right now they're able to have that kind of access. And there is this confidence building that is coming on. The budget processes is now is now ongoing at local government levels with the communities now seeing themselves as the main drivers, although it is not as, uh, as, 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 as well participated as one would have desired. Uh, you know, like Goji has said earlier, that there is still this uh, low participation. But for the citizens who are in the know, uh, they have taken the campaign forward at local government levels to ensure that they mobilize more of their citizens, you know, more of their 
community people to really participate in the process. And uh, for now, I think the challenge will continue to be inclusion, 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 getting, making sure that the persons with disability are well, are well involved, making sure that people who are uh, usually, we, we, the, the, according to the local government law, they are said to be disadvantaged. Uh, disadvantaged groups here reflect people who may not be indigenous to a community, but they are everyday part of the daily economic uh, decision and activity within that community. And, we, uh, and the law believes that they should also be given that room to participate. And in some places, like in Kaura, uh, local government, we have seen those things happen. And so for us, the local government reforms have been I've been opening up the space uh, uh, for, for grassroots uh, participation in governance. It has been in, uh, enabling the space for people to be really engaging in issues of development that is being driven locally. They have also been very much involved in issues of projects that the local government is implementing, and we feel that that is actually a fair beginning for good things to come. Uh, that, that is not with, without challenges, but... Uh, like ref every reform is, is, uh, is said to be ongoing because it's evolving. So most of this learning is also helping uh, improve the design, improve uh, the fun its functionality, and these are the things that we are consistently engaging and advocating for. Wow. You've had it, and uh, I'm sure we understand all of it and the uh, impact and benefit that it's going to bring and how it's going to create a platform for the citizens and the government at that tier of our government to come together and make life better for Nigerians. I'll still come back to this, but let's talk a little bit about the second item that we have on our uh, bill today because we'll be talking about the pro program that's coming up tomorrow. Yeah. If there's possibility of the public to link up to it via uh, social mm -hmm. media platforms and all of that, yeah. we've got to talk about them. But first, we'll be linking up with Eddie Ochibo any minute from now so that he would also add his voice to the conversation in respect of the appointment of the of a new chairman for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in the uh, person of Abdul Rashid Bawa. So any minute from now, we will link up with Eddie Ochibo. But before he comes on, I'd like to let you know that the president has uh, nominated Abdul Rashid Bawa as a substantive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. And uh, the president wants the, uh, Senate, the, the, the upper chambers to confirm, to screen and confirm Bawa for this position. And like I also said, if you've been on the street, Online and offline, you know of all the different allegations and stuff that's, uh, that's, that, that, that has come up since this announcement was made and how Nigerians are reacting to it. So we'll get to talk about them and, uh, also see how his appointment is going to help or promote the anti-corruption fight in Nigeria. I'm trying to link up to Eddie or Chibo now. Hoping that I'll be able to connect with him. As soon as I connect with him, we'll definitely start talking about the <coughs> nomination. Yes, you're listening to Ground Zero on Invicta 98.9 FM. Okay, I have Eddie Ochibo online. Eddie Ochibo, good evening. Good evening, my brother. Is can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, let's talk about this... Uh, uh, the appointment of um, Bauer, Abdul Rashid Bauer, yes. as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Substantive Chairman. Who is this man and what does he represent in the anti corruption fight? Thank you very much, Agis. Uh, from the two, I read about his profile. You know, he comes into the tree. Uh, that's the EFCC free. I say for the first uh, to be trained as they call them is it um, uh, EFCC uh, commandant or something. Like that. She came in through there. Yeah. Those, they, they trained them in the NBA if you know. So he we we was among the forces and he had a degree in uh, economics 
and a master's, I think, international relations and uh, diplomacy or so. So, uh, with that, I, I am happy about one thing, that is the youth, you know, is 40. So, if he is actually, uh, if he lives up to his picture about his uh, qualification that I've seen, I think he fits into somebody who can be a crack investigator because the essence of the EFCC is to do the right thing without intimidating anybody, anything that has to do with financial fraud and all this thing. You do it without, you know, uh, fear or favor and without encroaching into the money that have been collected as uh, was alleged against uh, the former uh, uh, chairman Magu. So, uh, all in all, uh, what I would say is that Nigerians, we, you know, we are on the brink. Whatever we do today now is how we can begin to, you know, come, begin to think inwards, think uh, rightly to ensure that we don't have an implosion. Because the ill wind, when it blows, you don't know where it is going. You don't know who it will hit. So, uh, a commendable uh, this thing, but uh, I, I think the issue of experience will may affect that uh, that who was just trained in 2005. So okay. I don't know how you'll be able to, you know, uh, maneuver his way amongst uh, other dictators who may have more experience than him in terms of uh, uh, passing through the pol police and the rest of the He I don't from the look of this, he didn't go through police and the investigation and yeah. the rest of them. So, so um, all in all, well, let's look at what he would do. He looks very confident. You know, the looks, you don't believe in looks, huh? <laughs> it looks like it looks like someone who can't perform. All right, Amy, among, among some of the reports that we are getting is the fact that he has once been in uh, in, in in collision part with the immediate past uh, EFCC uh, chairman Ibrahim Magu, who arrested him over some allegations. That's on one hand. There's also yeah. feelers and allegations too. That is a blood relation of the Attorney General of the Federation. Why should that surprise you? Why should that surprise you? What, what is the, uh, how do you call it now, the, um, the, the signpost of the government? This is about uh, what you call uh, people that president. The president is saying he likes to work with people he knows, people are close to him. That has been a hallmark of, of the Administration about okay. it. Let's call it speed and speed. So why should that even surprise you? It is not surprise you, you know. And that puts us in that difficult situation that rather than talk about inclusion, we are doing things, you know, that leading to exclusion. And which is already, you can see the signal, the war signal, drum beats of war, all this. We need the elite who constitute police, police, military and the rest of them, they, 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 they may not think that the thing will fail to hit them or whatever. By the time they, 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 there is a fire on the mountain, that they can escape to Europe and the rest of them. But who can contain 200 and something million people? If they, if we, so that's why I said, let our elite, political the leadership or rulership or whatever you want to call them, they need to sit up and put this country on the right path. Right All right. now, you know, there is Macabre dance. I call it Macabre dance. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Eddie. We will still get back to you before we round up the program. Let's go back to the studio now and do some more talk. And uh, take some calls from our listeners. Then uh, we'll wrap up the program. We we'll still have some time on our hands. Now, before we open the phone lines for, um, for listeners to call in, uh, I want you to basically tell us this activity that's taking place tomorrow and the importance while Martins will tell us how others can link up and be a part of the activity. Uh, uh, while um, Mohammed uh, Adamu will tell us how others can link up to be part of the activity. 
All right, you okay, so I thought he would tell us about uh, the program tomorrow. Uh, since they are the host. okay, they are the host actually. <laughs> you guys are partners, but they are the host. Yeah. So, um, uh, Mohammed, can you please let's have um, an overview of the activity, the importance, and uh, let's have that first. Yes, coming to you, okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the activity that is taking place tomorrow is the public presentation of the report of this uh, 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 accountability mechanism uh, that uh, has already been set up in 10 pilot local government. So uh, the, 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 the program is to publicly present the uh, report so that there will be buy-in by stakeholders, uh, get feedbacks, and tell the success stories and the lesson learned from the uh, already established uh, technical working groups. Okay. Then scale up the uh, mechanism, the program to the remaining 30 local government. So the program is a hybrid program, a physical presentation that will be done at the Ministry for Local Government, and then others will join in uh, using uh, virtual uh, platforms like the Zoom and uh, the the link, the passcode, and the meeting ID has already been sent out. And I also believe that there are other platforms that will be used to hook up to the program, the Facebook, Twitter, and other uh, platforms. Okay. So basically, this is the uh, overview of the program to, to showcase the program to the public so that there will be greater buy-in. Then uh, uh, look at the successes recorded the challenges and the lesson learned in the whole issue. Okay, Mr. Maybe Mujica. just to add uh, mm -hmm. to that, uh, we hope that uh, the 10 local government chairmen would be part of the activity tomorrow at the ministry. All of them have been invited. And also uh, from the 10 local governments that participated, the members of the technical working group, they would all converge at the local government secretariat to be part of the program via the Zoom link virtually. So they will be all live while the program is uh, happening, while the general public can also join, as he said. But the main stakeholders we are looking out for is the technical working group members in the local governments that participated. Okay. And I, I hopefully will be there. And, of course, you can also follow a live view of the event on Ground Zero, Twitter handle tomorrow. What's the Facebook uh, handle to also well, watch out for that? Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's going to be screamed, uh, streamed uh, live on uh, Calpet's uh, Facebook account. Uh, you will just have to type Calpet series in your search uh, bar on Facebook. What's the spelling right? of Calpet? K C C A C A C A L P E D. Yeah. A uh, series. Uh, S E R I E S. All right, let's quickly take some calls because we are actually running out of time. 0840989 Who is our first caller this evening? Good evening, uh, Apart and, and Yusuf and Mohammed. Good I'm evening. By Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the program. Thank you, thank you. You people have spoken very well. But uh, my question that I'm throwing to you is, and you are crew there. Is it uh, only some certain people that are having questionable character allegedly that always the president needs to be appointed? What happened to the case of this uh, former EFCC chairman? That's, that's the reason why every time this inter international transmitting something described as corrupt country, we keep on saying that they are not justifying to go. At least I was expecting this case had been ruled out before he appointed another person based on uh, on Mary. So we are keeping praying for them. Or they should just do the needful, as uh, uh, this man has said, Eddie Chibo has said. It. They should always give us the dividend of democracy. All That's right. a wonderful. Day. Thank you so much. Let's quickly take this other call. In one minute, please. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the program. Hello, good evening. How are you? Thank you so much. In one minute, let's, who am I speaking with? My name is Musa Bala, and uh, let me quickly thank the domestic government uh, for actual restructuring in the state, the local government, and even within the state, that everywhere. This is against uh, those uh, advocating for restructuring that cannot even hold local government elections for the past 15 years. 
um, calling on them to come to Kaduna State and see what is the meaning of restructuring. And on the issue, uh, the issue of uh, the new SEC board that is under Rashid uh, Bawa, uh, it's normal. I think it's very abnormal if there are no uh, criticism, whatever, whether they are good or bad. And uh, we force ourselves to see faults so that we can talk about it even when somebody has not even started. It's normal, if provided it is done for the interest of the country. But if it is not done for the interest of the country, from the way we do it, we do understand. On my own part, I can say that I wish him the best and I wish him God's protection. And I wish God also to protect all of us from corrupt leaders and their agents that are always taking us backward in many ways in this country. And I hope he will do his little bit and go. He is qualified. Uh, he has so many international trainings. He has investigated so many cases, both in Nigeria. He has undergone training, both home and abroad. But whatever the qualification, he will still be doubtful or being criticized, uh, uh, not with national interest, but with personal interest. All right, Mr. Bala, we are running out of time. Let's take the next call and hopefully our last Bye-bye. caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. You are welcome I'm to Brown Zero. What's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Comrade Gabriel, the Texas man. All right, let's so, have I think want to commend His Excellency, the Zetu Governor of Canada State, for these reforms. But my worry is that, just as Gloria said in the perspective this morning, would the right people be allowed to be elected or would the uh, governor or government in power just decide who is going to be there? All right. If they are going to allow election, free election to be elected, that is good. All right. On the appointment of the Abdul Rashid Bawa of IESCC, if you look at the whole tweet and how Mabul left, you will definitely know that there is something connected. Just this allegation may be correct because right. imagine Mabul left, they were saying that it should, it should be proof. No party today who didn't hear anything about him. Even the allegation of uh, Fabio and the, the minister. Okay, uh, well, let's take our next call. Thank you so much. Uh, Hello, good evening, our last caller this evening. Good evening, my name is Peter, calling me from uh, Nasarawa. All right, quickly, Peter. Yes, I am actually very excited about the event coming up about the local government. Um, I learned that the venue is being disclosed to the Technical Working Committee, uh, those that are members that um, are participating in the program tomorrow. Um, but, um, just as you are discussing for moments, uh, for moments ago, you said that this thing is supposed to be like public uh, oriented, that yeah. it's supposed to like, um, kind of have a participation from the general. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know the names or the people uh, who are the technical working committee members. Like, can uh, they know? I mean, I need to know who they are and uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a venue where uh, and the whole general public are not going to participate like the people uh, from uh, children. Uh, all right, Mr. Peter, Mr. Peter. I will just yes. quickly, quickly answer that, then we'll round up the program because we are actually out of time. Okay, uh, you can go to oh, okay. Ground Zero handle Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we'll drop the link for registration. If you register, we'll drop you the, 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 the register. When you register, we'll send you an email with the link that you can join and participate. Then we'll also be streaming it live on Ground Zero. Ground Zero. Uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter handle, handle Series 2. Yes. Uh, the two ground zero. Ground zero ground zero two four seven at ground zero two four seven. At ground zero two four seven, you can go to a FM Facebook page later. The link for you to register and be a part of it will be uploaded there. And of course, you can go to the carpet series yeah, uh, Facebook account. account. You'd also see the link there. Now the technical working group. Uh, members that he was asking about. Yes, for every local government, you have the Youth Council chairman as a member. You have uh, SBMC, School Management Board, uh, this committee. Uh, committee. Mm. You have uh, the uh, National Council of Women's Society representative and other uh, prominent people like that. So uh, you can reach out to any of these persons. They are members of the technical working group. Uh, I think Nasarawa is from Chukum, and Chukum is part of the 10 local governments uh, involved. So you can reach out to the Youth Council chairman, 
is a member and women leader from the National Women's Society, Council, Council of, of Women's Women Society. Society yeah. All right, that's about the size of the program. I am a hisa, but I want to say a very big thank you to Yusuf, Gode, Martins, Abbas, Dan, and Dan Duma, and of course, to Mohammed Adamu for having time to be on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, so yeah. tomorrow we'll be there, and of course, on Saturday, we are going to give you a recap on what transpired. But meanwhile, you can go to the Twitter handle of Ground Zero at Ground Zero 247 on Twitter. Follow us, and tomorrow you'll be able to watch the live presentation of everything that's going to happen there. Until on Saturday, I'll be on again. Plant a tree to the water and watch it grow. May the good mighty Lord bless and keep us all. Amen.